In this video, we are going to do another example in our improper integral section. So I want to evaluate the following integral of 9x cubed ln x dx over the interval from 0 to infinity. So as we mentioned in the last video, anytime we see an integral now, we are going to first have to decide, is it improper or not? And looking at this, this is definitely improper. I can tell right away because I see the infinity. If either limit of integration is infinite, it's definitely improper. But that's not the only reason it is. It's one reason. So it's definitely improper because one of these bounds is infinity. But there's a second reason why. The second reason why is our function is not continuous at x equals 0. Specifically, the ln of x part is discontinuous at x equals 0. And x equals 0 is the other, other limit of integrations. There's two reasons why overall this thing is improper. And any time there's more than one reason an integral is improper, I need to split it up into two pieces. But before I do that, I notice that the 9 is a constant. Let's just factor it out. So we'll get 9 times integral from 0 to infinity x cubed ln x dx. And then we'll just keep the 9 in outside the whole time and then evaluate the integral now. So we said we need to split this into two pieces. We can only handle one improper thing at a time in an integral. So the 9 is going to be outside. And I need to split it and go from 0 to something, x squared, sorry, x cubed ln x dx. Got to put something up here. And then the next integral is going to pick up where that last one at left off, whatever that number is. And then infinity x cubed ln x dx. And then we could put any number that we want in that, in that space. So I'm just going to pick something simple. I'm going to pick one for both of these spots. All right, so we have these two integrals now. We got the integral from 0 to 1, and this integral from 1 to infinity. So I'm going to begin by evaluating this first integral. So let's start with this one. So let's first evaluate. The integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed ln x dx. And this integral is improper in its own right because of the 0. This function is not continuous at 0. This is improper due to the 0. The other integral from 1 to infinity, that's improper because of the infinity. All right, so. For this integral, I need to replace the thing that makes it improper with a t. So what makes it improper is the 0. Let's replace that 0 with a, with a t. So t to 1 x cubed ln x dx. And I am going to write a limit, but I'm going to hold off on that uh, until I do this antiderivative. Because I'm noticing that to do this antiderivative, it's going to be a little bit more involved. There's going to be more steps. So I just want to do all of that computation first, the antiderivative part, and then I'll do the limit afterwards. OK, so how do we evaluate this? At this point, I want to give you the chance to try it. So pause the video for about two, ooh, whoops. Whoops, that just shifted on me right there. Pause it for, let's get it back. Ooh, almost. OK, all right, there we go. So pause it for two minutes to try this on your own, to evaluate this integral. Four, three, two, one. Pause that video for two minutes to try this. That may not be enough time to finish doing this antiderivative, but I really want you to be thinking about what are the key steps? How do we begin? All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it for about two minutes to try that. So we need integration by parts for this. So 
I'm going to let U be something and DV be something. And the best choice for U here is ln of x, because that, because its derivative is simpler than it is. And I'll let DV be the other stuff, x cubed dx. So then I write DU and V. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, and I have to write a dx next to it. And antiderivative of x to the third, that is x to the 4 over 4. So now we do this integration by parts. Let me just put this in a little bubble, and we do this. So we will get uv, which is x to the fourth ln x over 4. Th this is a definite integral, so I need to put this line, t down here, 1 up here, and then minus the integral from t to 1 of v du. So we'll get x to the fourth over 4 times du is 1 over x dx. And this integral now becomes simpler than what we had before. We could simplify this, and this is, this is 1 fourth x cubed. And that's what we're looking for when we do integration by parts, that the new integral of v du is simpler than the one that we had at the start. Okay, so let's plug in the 1 and the t into this first expression. So if I plug in 1, we'll get 1 uh, to the fourth times ln 1 over 4 minus, and if you plug in t, we get t to the fourth ln of t over 4. And then we have minus, we got to do the antiderivative 1 fourth x cubed. So that's going to be 1 fourth times x to the 4 over 4. Because that 1 fourth is a constant, it just stays in front. And then antiderivative x to the third is x to the 4 over 4. Okay, and then I got to plug in the t and plug in the 1. So when I need to plug in those values, and there's this minus sign here in front, a minus sign in front of the integral, I'm going to put a parentheses around what the antiderivative was so I can make sure that I keep that minus sign out in front because it was out in front of the whole integral. So it should be out in front of the whole thing that I get when I plug in. All right, so let's simplify more ln of 1 is 0. So that's nice. So the first term becomes 0. And then minus t to the fourth ln of t over 4. And then keep that minus sign in front. And now I plug in 1. And that'll give me 1 on top. 1 to the fourth is 1. Over 16 on the bottom. Minus, when you plug t in, we get t to the fourth over 16. So, okay. Now let's distribute that negative sign, and we'll get negative t to the fourth ln of t over 4 minus 1 16th, and then plus t to the 4 over 16. Alrighty, so so far this is just taking in antiderivative, using integration by parts, and plugging some values in while being careful of that negative sign. But remember, we needed to take a limit because this is an improper integral. So on this interval, we, we were dealing with this integral that was over the interval from 0 to 1. And the thing that was making this improper was the 0. So if we approach 0 from within the, in, uh, the interval, we would be approaching it from the left-hand side. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I misspoke. Approaching it from the right-hand side. Okay, so we need to take the limit as t approaches 0 from the right. Okay, so let's take that limit. Take the limit as t approaches 0 from the right. The limit as t approaches 0 from the right of negative t to the 4, ln of t over 4 minus 1 over 16 plus t to the 4th over 16. All right, so for part of this limit, I'm going to give you a chance to think about it because a big part of these improper integral questions comes down uh, to doing the limit at the end. 
And that's really valuable practice. So I wanna give you the opportunity to get some of that practice even here in the videos. It's helpful to get it even now before you go to try problems on your own. Okay, so part of this though, let's reason out together. The negative one over 16, that's just gonna stay negative one over 16, that's a constant. Um, and then this last fraction isn't too bad. If we just try plugging in, we would get zero on the top, 16 on the bottom, and zero over 16, that is zero. Okay, so what I want you to do now is think about this first fraction. So think about how you'd evaluate the limit of that first fraction, because the rest of it, we know what it is. We know it's that negative 1 16th, and the last fraction, that limit's gonna be zero. So pause the video, this time for three to four minutes. Three to four minutes and see if you can try to evaluate this limit. Four, three, two, one, pause that video. Pause it for three to four minutes and see if you can evaluate this limit of this first fraction. All righty, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it for about three to four minutes. If you didn't, I would really encourage you to do so. The limit of this first fraction is one of the more, uh, it's at a level, uh, let me just say this, it's, it's a more challenging limit. So I would encourage you to try it now because this is the level of some of the problems that, that we'll see in exercises. Okay, so I'm gonna begin by plugging in. It's typically our first step with limits. And if we plug in, we get, I'm gonna move this four to the front. We get negative four, sorry, one fourth in the front. And then if you plug zero into t to the fourth, you'll get zero. And if you plug it into the ln, we get ln of zero. But ln of zero is undefined. So because it's undefined, we have to be careful. Now we have to remember that, wait, t is not actually zero. When, when you do a limit, t is not allowed to be equal to the number. It's just close to the number. And because t is approaching zero from the right, I'm gonna put a little plus sign on this zero in the exponent. And remember, that notation just means, zero with the plus sign just means that it is really close to zero, but a little bit bigger than it. Okay, so what's ln of zero with a little plus sign? So to remember what that is, we go to the graph of ln of x, y equals ln of x. Okay, so that graph looks like this. And this x-intercept is one comma zero. Ln of one is zero. And we wanna know what's happening as the input. The input needs to get really close to zero, but it's gotta stay bigger than zero. So the x value has gotta be getting really, really close to zero. That's this part of the graph, getting really, really close to zero for x. And as that happens, the y values are going to negative infinity. Alrighty, so let's write that in. We, this is negative one fourth times zero is zero. And ln of zero with the little plus sign is negative infinity. I'm gonna highlight those in so I know that that is the same as that. Alrighty, so when we write this zero first, that doesn't mean it's exactly zero because we're taking a limit. T doesn't equal zero, it's just really close to zero. So technically we're saying that this is something really small, that's what we mean when we write the zero in front, multiplied by something that's negative, and then the infinity just means it's a huge number, a huge number that you're sticking that negative sign in front of. And that's an indeterminate form. Something of the form zero times negative infinity is indeterminate. The conceptual reason why is that in, in general, if you multiply a number by infinity, we'd expect it to be huge because you're multiplying by a huge number. But on the flip side, if you multiply something by a really small number, this thing that we have first, we'd expect the whole thing to be really small. So those two terms, this negative infinity and the really small, they, they're kind of having a tug of war with each other. They're kind of having a tug of war and it's like, what wins? Is the thing that's really small getting really small faster than the thing that's negative infinity is getting like huge and negative, negatively infinite, let me just say that. So that's why it's indeterminate. Indeterminate just means I can't tell just by looking at it, 
just by looking at the fact that this is this has the form 0 times negative infinity, what the value is. There are plenty of things that I can tell what the value is. Like when I plugged into this fraction and I got 0 over 16, we know what that is. We know 0 over 16 is 0. So that would not be indeterminate. Okay, so that was a bit of a bit of a digression, bit of review from previous calculus course about indeterminate forms. But we've talked about how to evaluate things like 0 times negative infinity. We need to convert this to a fraction and then check to see maybe we can use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so when we do that, let's continue that here. We get the limit as t approaches 0 from the right. And I'm going to move this negative 1 fourth out in front. So negative 1 fourth out in front. Let me give myself more room for that. All right, I just rewrote that a little better. Okay, and I'm going to move the t to the fourth to the denominator because that looks easier to move to the denominator than the ln. Okay, so I'll keep ln of t on the top. t to the fourth, when I bring it to the denominator, I got to reciprocal it, so I'll get 1 over t to the fourth. Okay, so we have this part, and the other part of the limit we know. We know the negative 1 16th is going to stay as it is. And we know the limit of that last fraction, t to the fourth over 16. We know that that is zero. All right, so we're hoping that with ln of t over 1 over t to the fourth that we're going to be able to do L'Hopital's. But we got to check. So we got to plug into this now. And if I do that, I get ln of zero with a little plus sign on top. On the bottom, I get 1 over 0 with a little plus sign because t is approaching 0 from the right, which means t is something really close to 0 but positive. And even when you raise that to the fourth power, it's still going to be really close to 0 but a little bigger than it. That's why I'm just writing 0 with a little plus sign. Okay. And we already saw what, what ln of 0 with a little plus sign was. From the graph, that is negative infinity. As the input of ln gets really close to zero from the right, the y values go to negative infinity. And if you divide one by something really, really small, but positive, it is positive infinity. It is huge and positive because one and that denominator are positive. Okay, so negative infinity over infinity, we can use L'Hopital's on this. So we can use L'Hopital's and we are happy about that. Someone put a smiley face. Okay, so. Let's do L'Hopital's. I'll write equal sign and I'll write LH because I'm doing L'Hopital's. So we got that negative one fourth in front. We get the limit as t approaches zero from the right. Uh, for ln of t, that derivative is one over t. And then for one over t to the fourth, ooh, I need to put another arrow here. One over t to the fourth is t to the negative four. So that derivative is going to be negative four t to the negative five. And then I still have that minus 1 over 16 at the end of this. Okay, so let's simplify. So this equals negative 1 fourth limit as t approaches 0 from the right. 1 over t. And I can rewrite this as a fraction. This is negative 4 over t to the 5. So when you divide by that, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiplying by negative t to the 5 over 4. Okay, so we have that whole thing. And then minus that 1 16th. And then this can simplify. So this product here simplifies. This is negative 1 fourth t to the 4th. That's what we're taking the limit of. And now we're at a point where we can plug in. We are ready to plug in what t is approaching, just zero straight up. We can plug in without even worrying about that it's approaching zero from the right at this point. Okay, and if we do, we get negative one fourth times negative one fourth times zero, because we're plugging zero into this. And then we have that minus one sixteenth out outside of this whole thing. So we get just negative 1 over 16. 
Alrighty, so what have we shown so far? If I scroll it up, if I scroll it up, remember we had split up our original integral into two pieces, from one from zero to one, and one from one to infinity, and we were evaluating this first integral from zero to one, and we got its value. We just got that it's negative one over 16. So now we gotta do this second integral. The second integral is going to be really similar in terms of the antiderivative. So that part I'm actually going to leave as a homework exercise to evaluate what the second one is. Um, but I'm going to tell you what the answer ends up being. But actually doing all the steps, that's going to be a homework exercise. So that second integral, it turns out diverges. And that's going to be a homework problem. So because one of these pieces diverges, that means the original integral also diverges. So when you split up an integral into two pieces, if either one of those pieces diverges, or if both of them do, then the original integral also diverges. Okay, so you might be thinking, wait, wouldn't it have been nice if we just did the second one first? Because if we did the second one first and got that it diverges, we would have been done. We wouldn't have had to do the first one because we could have just said, oh, the original one diverges because one of the pieces diverges. And that's absolutely right. Sometimes we don't know uh, if that's going to happen when we initially see a problem. But I do want to make a note of that. So if we had done the second integral first and seen that it diverges after evaluating it, we could have immediately said that the original integral diverges also. And that would have been much more efficient because we would have only had to do one of those improper integrals rather than, rather than both of them. But I wanted to work it out this way just to show you well, what would happen if we, if we didn't pick the ideal situation first. Yep. You know, we can still handle it, but I also wanted to do this just to show you well, what does it look like if I had to do something like this integral that we had? Like this integral involved um, integration by parts. And then it also involved some L'Hopital's rule uh, by rewriting this zero times negative infinity limit as a fraction and then evaluating that using L'Hopital's rule. So this is a more challenging example. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to, uh, wanted to do it. I wanted to tackle a challenging example together. Alrighty, so in terms of our goals for this section, we have finished our last goal. This example was actually an integral that was both type one, where the limits of integration are infinite. We had one of them being infinity here. And also type two, because our function became infinite somewhere on that interval. Or actually, it's more accurate to say my function was discontinuous somewhere on that interval. Uh, it happened at zero because ln was discontinuous at x equals zero. 